Good evening to all my wonderful viewers out there and welcome back to another top 5 video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering my top 5 favourite spring summer 2022 undercover double taps one on one pieces. Now some of you are probably like, Daniel, what's going on? When did this collab release? Why did this collab release? What? <laughs> And fair enough, it kind of went under the radar when it comes to collaborative releases. I mean, unless you were following both the Double Taps Instagram and the Undercover Instagram, there weren't too many people talking about this collaboration from what I saw. But yes, Undercover and Double Taps have collaborated in 2022. This is the uh, first time they have collaborated since the year 2000, 22 years ago. <laughs> It sounds crazy to say out loud, like, oh yeah, our last collab was 22 years ago. <laughs> it's pretty damn wild. Uh, how it all came together was, uh, it was all explained in this like three minute video that was uploaded to Undercover's Instagram. Uh, I've watched it and I'm going to relay how I interpreted it to you. So this collaboration came about because Jun Takahashi decided uh, to go through his, you know, uh, archives, have a look at his past collections and collaborations to inspire himself for the 30th anniversary of Undercover, which uh, from my knowledge off the top of my head is uh, 2023 as the brand was established in 1993. So uh, going through the archives, he obviously found the 2000 collaboration that he did with Tetsu's brand Double Taps and decided to contact him and ask him if he'd be interested in doing a collaboration to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the brand. Now, this collaboration that they set out to do was a series of menswear pieces that Jun Takahashi would wear, which to him was an unusual approach because generally he just likes to create menswear without the focus of uh, pieces that he would personally wear himself. He just creates to create and not to create to make pieces that he would personally see himself wearing. He says that while wearing one of the pieces that he created. <laughs> In the video at least. So, I mean, I don't know. Either way, it, it, yeah, it was a nice little video that covered the reasons for the collab and what the approach was. The approach for the collaboration was to do the series of menswear pieces in the most and remove all ineffectiveness from the pieces and make these uh day-to-day -day, everyday wearable pieces that he would see himself wearing now the one-on-one -on -one approach is uh from how i interpret it is tetsu coming in and doing these pieces in the scope of how he would see june handling the cut and graphics of the piece and then uh, June would come in and do vice versa, you know, do the piece in the cuts and the graphics that he would see Tetsu do it in, and that's how the pieces came together. I may have misinterpreted that, but that's how I saw the one-on-one -on -one approach being handled and explained in that Instagram video. If you want to check it out yourself, I definitely recommend going to Undercover's Instagram, and they'll give you a breakdown there of how this collaboration came about, the focus of the collab and just any other little details there. Now, it is a little bit odd because this collaboration was meant to be for the 30th anniversary of the brand. And well, it's not 2023 yet, but in the video, there were pieces showcased that aren't or haven't released in this drop on January 8th. So it makes me think that this is an ongoing collaboration for this year where to hype up the 30th anniversary of Undercover uh, that will be getting multiple different little capsules with double taps. There's no confirmation on that, but that's the only way that I could really make sense of it all and kind of, you know, connect all the pieces there. But I could mis be misinterpreting it in that way. But there were pieces showcased in that video that aren't or haven't released in Jan on that January 8th drop. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe later on down the track, we'll get a part two and three and whatever uh, of this one-on-one -on -one premise, capsule, and idea this year. We'll just have to wait and see. 
But either way, while we wait and see what happens in today's video, I'm going to be covering my top five favorite pieces from this January 8th drop. Now I'll be covering the materials that are used in the piece, my thoughts on the pieces and why I've given them the spot I have given them. That's basically it. Let's dive into it though guys. Let's go check out my fifth favorite piece from this one on one capsule. Piece number five, it is going to go to the cap. Or if you want to be technical, uh, piece number five is the UC1B9H01 piece or cap. Uh, it features co branding on the front, embroidered there. It is a five panel one, two, three, four. And on the other side, obviously, is the fifth panel. Uh, it's I mean, it doesn't have a lot going on. It has co-branding on the front, a co-branded little tag there. But apart from that, it's kept pretty, pretty basic. But that is the whole essence of the collaboration. It meets exactly what the collab intended to do, which is to be versatile, easy pieces to wear. And it's just a nice little cap. Will it fit on my big ass head? Probably not. <laughs> Although it does have strap on the back for sizing, but I mean, we might have to punch a few holes uh, towards the end there just so it can uh, fit. Because <laughs> I just, I doubt it. I really doubt it would fit me. Uh, it retailed for 175 US dollars or uh, 19,958 Japanese yen. It only came in one color, which is the black, one size as well. And the material is 50% wool, 50% polyester. So a bit of a blend there. It's a nice, solid little basic piece there, and I could see myself wearing it. Like, it's just co branded on there. I like five panels. There's not really anything to complain about. I would, I was pretty comfortable at putting it my fifth favorite piece. It's an awesome little piece there. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, but that is piece number five the UC1B9H01 five panel cap. Now, for piece number four, we have the UC1B9802 black pullover hoodie. Uh, this only released in one color, black, <laughs> and it released uh, with a material of 100% cotton. Now, looking at it first glance, it looks like just a basic black hoodie with one on one with a little patch there saying that down near the stomach area, down near the kangaroo pouch there, and some co-branding tags as well. But there's more details than we give credit for, and we can notice that when we zoom in. So, looking at it here, we have the one-on-one -on -one tag done as a patch embroidered onto the piece, but then the double taps patch and the undercover patch here is done in like a reversible patch you know instead of it having the i guess soft easy material to touch it has the individual stitchings on the exterior instead of the interior now you're probably like whoa why are they doing that why are they doing you know reversed patches well it's because the whole exterior of the hood or hoodie is reversed it's 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 been turned inside out <laughs> as you may notice when like i hover over the top here it's done, it's got the cotton fleece interior pushed to the exterior, which I thought was a really cool approach to that. So instead of having the warm fuzzy bits on the inside, you got it on the outside to push it onto the out. I think it's kind of cool. I don't own any hoodies that have been reversed like that. And to reverse the tags as well, to give it that like true reverse feeling, I think that's really crazy, man. That's a uni unique way of handling it, but it's still really versatile. Like it's all black. It's 100% cotton. It's still really easy to wear. It's not so textured where it, you'd have to style around it. It's still super easy. I love that. I think that's a really cool way of handling a hoodie. Uh, as we can see here, I'll just try and showcase a little bit more. You can see on the pocket, the fleece is on the outside instead of the inside. I mean, technically you could actually just reverse the hoodie and have it like the normal way a hoodie is. But I mean, that's kind of boring, right? 
Then you've just got a black hoodie that's done by double taps and undercover and all the fun is on the inside when it was meant to be intended to be on the outside. I personally wouldn't do that, but I suppose you could. You really could if you actually wanted to there. But it, I think it's just a crazy cool piece. I liked it and I think it just deserved number four. I would have liked to pick it up in an extra large, but as you can see, it is dumb popular and it completely sold out. But uh, yeah, I'm putting it at number four, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Let's head on over and have a look at my third favorite piece. Now for piece number three, it was, I mean, it was really tough trying to pick between four and three. I was like, uh, I could put number three at number four. I could put four at number three and it wouldn't change up too much. They're just too versatile and too similar. <laughs> like at least in how I would wear them in outfits. Like I could easily replace the hoodie at number four in the outfit that I would wear this with and vice versa. Like it's, <laughs> if it was so unique, I'd be like, nah, I could see myself wearing number three more then I could make a more clear decision. So yeah, in the end, I've just gone with the UC1B9801 neck sweater. It features the same detailing as the hoodie. It features that reversed patch on the front. Uh, on the back, it features the reversed patch and the one-on-one -on -one branding back there. And of course, it's inside out so it has the uh, fleecy detailing as we can see here on the exterior and the normal cotton on the interior and if you don't like it that way well you can easily turn it inside out <laughs> so it's a you know you can wear it as two different pieces you essentially get two pieces for the price of one uh, i think i would wear it with the cotton fleece on the outside just because it's a very unique take but there's not really too much else to say about this piece. It's 100% cotton, so it's the same as the hoodie. There's no crazy blend there. That's really it, you know? Um, I like it because of its, you know, its nice baggy silhouette around the sides. I mean, I say that, but the extra large would still be quite fitted on me because, you know, it's Japanese sizing, but it would be quite comfortable. The cotton would be high quality. It ticks all the boxes. I just had to put it at number three. As I said, it was very hard. Is this number three? Is this number four? I ended up going with this because I have like 10 bajillion black hoodies. I have, I think at the moment, only like one black crew neck sweater, maybe two. Um, but they both have like big graphics and big branding on like the chest area. So it would be kind of nice to get a Crinex sweater with the branding in a different place, a place that I could cover up if I wore a jacket over the top of it. So that's really why I went with this one being number three. That was like the little edge that I gave it. I just have too many black hoodies, could do with more black Crinex. This could be one that I could see myself wearing. Uh, and yeah. That's why I got number three, guys. Let me know how you feel about uh, the crew neck sweater that I put at number three. Now at piece number two, we have an outwear piece. Uh, this piece is the UC1B9101. I called it the Peacoat Blazer, but you guys may feel differently on how to describe this piece. But I, I don't know, it looked like a Peacoat mixed with some blazer qualities, especially with the collar and the buttons and everything like that. You guys may feel that it's a different silhouette. Uh, I really like this piece. It featured in two colors. It featured in a beige or a black. Uh, I liked its vertical pockets down near the bottom of the piece. It made me think of, you know, double taps as military pieces that they do. A chore jacket in a way with having them being vertical pockets. Uh, it's got a blend of 65% polyester and 35% cotton. So it's going to be a little bit weighted, but because it's primarily poly polyester, it's actually still going to be quite light. And I could see myself wearing this both in the winter and summer seasons, uh, just obviously stripped down a little bit more in the summery, warmer seasons, and layered up in the winter seasons, and or colder seasons. Speaking of which, the reason that I put this piece mainly at number two was actually seeing it on body. I felt like it didn't uh, hit too much when I saw it off body, but Double Taps posted a couple photos of it on body, and that's what drew me in. I was like, oh, but actually that over the top of a hoodie, I could see myself wearing this over the top of a turtleneck, maybe for like a date night or something like that. 
I, you know, as soon as I saw it on body, I started thinking of all these outfit ideas. And, you know, I'm like, oh, I could easily wear that in the beige. I could wear that in the black. There's nothing crazy going on on the back of it. So, you know, there's no graphics or anything you have to worry about dealing with or styling with. I came to like it a lot more as soon as I saw it on body. And that's what put me to say it has to go at number two. It works really well as a more formal piece, but depending on what you wear underneath it, it's, uh, I guess it's style or perception of the piece can change very quickly. It was very cool and how versatile it was. And while well, that's what they did coming into this capsule, they aimed for that. And I think double taps and undercover Definitely got it down pat, but yeah, that is piece number two, guys. The UC1 B9 101 E Coat Blazer. I mean, who would have thought this was number one? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you would if you had a look at the nine pieces that released before this video. You'd have been like, yeah, Daniel's gonna say he likes this one. <laughs> yeah, guys, I had to. I had to. It just, it looks awesome. So piece number one, we have the UC1 B9301. I called it the overcoat, almost a trench coat because the length, uh, it does have the um, the little slit uh, towards the back area of it. So it does hang down a little bit further on the back than it does in the front. It's got these amazing pocket detailings uh, around about the waist area. This extra panel on the sleeve which I'm a little bit confused of what the purpose of that is. I don't know if that's a pocket. I feel like they wouldn't just stitch on another piece of material on the wrist area there. So I feel like this is a pocket. Uh, it features a one-on-one -on -one, uh, little patch there under the collar area. I really like the collar area of it, the way that it kind of comes over like a robe, you know, like uh, one, si one side of it goes underneath the other side. I like that robe-like look to it. Uh, on the back of the piece, there's not much going on. It's just simply the silhouette itself, nothing too crazy. But what's really cool, and it's showcased in the later images here, on the interior of the piece, you have the Undercover Double Taps 2022 Collection one-on-one -on -one branding there, right? But they don't actually showcase it in the images here, but they uh, posted it on Double Taps' Instagram. It's actually a reversible jacket where you can wear this on the back panel. And I just thought that was really cool. A reversible trench coat like this, where you can either have the really branded side or the side more focused on the shapes. I thought that was really cool. And it also led me to believe that the, uh, you know, on the wrists there, it is a pocket. I don't know if there's any photos uh, in this gallery showcasing it. They don't seem to be, oh, okay, yeah. It looks like the pockets on the, on the waist area are the only pockets that are loading in. But yeah, uh, that's what led me to believe that these little panels here on the sleeves were pockets when you reverse the jacket, but I have no confirmation on that. I just thought it was really cool. You can wear it two ways, like the hoodie and the sweatshirt, but it has two completely different looks depending on which way you wear it. Either this way or the very branded way that it gives you as an alternative. Uh, the materials is 50% uh, wool and 50% polyester for this side. And then the interior side is 100% polyester. So the inside is gonna be softer. So if you do turn that inside out and wear it in the other way, it's gonna be a little bit harsher to wear. But I, you know, 50% wool, 50% polyester, that's still gonna be pretty lightweight and pretty nice to the touch. I don't feel like that's gonna be super rough on the skin because if it was a higher wool blend, then I could see it being a little bit more rough, but you could still comfortably wear it either way. I just think it's dope. I mean, that's just a sick piece. And it's so easy to wear. Look at it, it's black with a little bit of white branding on it. Anyone can wear that. Anyone could wear that. I think I would just, because it's such a big statement piece, I think I would just go black pants, black turtleneck and rock that. I, you know, let, let it do the talking. It's not loud in color, but it's got so much going on with the shape and the details to it. Yeah, awesome piece. If only I could pick it up if it wasn't sold out in every single size. In saying that, the only size I'd be able to wear is the extra large. 
<laughs> but yeah, just an awesome piece. It retailed for 1,111 US dollars or 126,720 Japanese yen. I don't think this collaboration is releasing in boutiques. I think it's exclusively on the undercover store and undercover physical stores in Japan. But yeah, wow. I, if anything, out of all the pieces that released in these, uh, in this, you know, January 8th capsule, I would want this one the most. This is definitely my favorite. Had to go at number one. It's the one that I could see myself wearing the most. Its versatility is just unmatched and it's just so cool as an individual piece. I loved it guys, but um, yeah, maybe you feel differently, you know, maybe you like the pieces in different order, maybe you like the pants that I didn't even mention, uh, yeah, let me know, uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the five pieces that I've picked and the order that I've put them in, uh, down in that comment section below. That is it guys, that is my top five favorite pieces that I've covered uh, from Double Taps and Undercovers Spring Summer 2022 collaboration the one-on-one -on -one capsule. We don't know if we're getting further parts of it because as I mentioned in that Instagram video, they posted explaining uh, everything to do with this collab. There was like a button-up t-shirt. There were other pieces showcased. So we may be getting, a, you know, another, another drop of this, you know, a part two, maybe a part three, I don't know. Uh, if that's the case, I'll definitely do another top five video, but uh, I just, I really wanted to highlight at least the pieces that dropped on January 8th, because these were awesome. They were very easy to wear. They had cool, unique twists to them. They were just sweet. Undercover, banging, <laughs> banging. Just, you know, Jun Takahashi. And of course I gotta, you know, I gotta thank Tetsu as well from Double Taps coming in here as well. Yeah, it was just an awesome collaboration. I would love to own it all, if only. <laughs> That's a lot of money I'd have to drop to buy it all, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish I owned it all. I would love to hear from you guys though in that comment section below. What were you feeling from this January 8th drop? Did you agree with all the pieces that I put up or do you have your own order? Let me know what your top five favorite pieces were from this ca uh, January 8th capsule were down in that comment section below. And of course, if you guys want me to keep covering further undercover collaborations, uh, further undercover releases, you gotta give me the three indicators, which is a like on this video, comment in that comment section down below, and of course, a subscribe to the channel. We're trying to aim for the new subscriber milestone of 3,245 subscribers before the end of January. Uh, hopefully with your guys' continuous support, we can reach that milestone before the end of the month. But that is all I have to say about this uh, awesome January 8th capsule, guys. So until the next top five video, until the next double taps video, until the next undercover video, I'll catch you later.